بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب إله العالمين أبا القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الصادقين الغر الميامين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين وحجته على الخلائق أجمعين طاووس أهل الجنة ومهدي هذه الأمة القائم المنتظر المهدي فداه أرواح العالمين Brothers and sisters, respected elders, I've seen my dear beloved mom join as well Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh um, Inshallah everyone is well uh, I hope you are having a blessed Thursday Laylatul Jum'ah The first Laylatul Jum'ah of Shahr Shawwal, the first layer to Jum'ah after Shahr Ramadan and Mubarak. Um, yeah, hope you're all doing well and really looking forward to tonight. Tonight we have an intriguing topic. We are going to be joined by none other than Haraka's own uh, Al-Hajj Mustafa Mas'ud. And he's going to be talking about racism in Islam. Racism and Islam and the connection. Uh, of course, we've seen the atrocities and the situation going on at the moment in the US. Um, with the uh, with the death of George Floyd, and so of course it's a topical issue. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing from the Had about it as well. After that, uh, for those of you who don't know, we are a big fan of some fun and games at Al Harak Al Husseini as well. So we are going to be having uh, two games tonight. We're going to be having what we call Guess Who. So for those of you who tuned in for our Aid special, uh, we had three facts about a uh, a person. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a person, by the way, that could be a clue. Uh, but three facts about uh, a title or a person, potentially, um, and you have to guess, or the crowd has to guess who that is. And then we have a fastest finger quiz as well. So, um, yeah, fun packed evening for you tonight, but also for a bit of a serious undertone, uh, speaking about racism. I'm going to mention, uh, rather not mention, I'm going to bring in our dear brother Al Hajj Mustafa Mas'ud now. So if I go to our live. I think he's requested Ahsan Hajj and we'll welcome him first and foremost with a salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Assalamu alaikum Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allah yikhalik Hajji thank you for inviting me Habibi Hajji how are you? How's it going? Are you well? Alhamdulillah very well yourself? Long time no see I'm okay I'm okay I'm settling in after uh after Shahar Ramadan now, I'm still, my appetite's not back to where it was yet, but I'm working on it. Okay, inshallah, inshallah, it's back. I'm, I usually, right now, in a couple of hours, I'll go to the kitchen and eat. I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're usually preparing for our 11 o'clock shows, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, subhanAllah. Oh, time. How are you? Had you all well? The family Alhamdulillah. well? Alhamdulillah, all well. And since you mentioned your mother, I'll also mention my mother. She's also joined us on, on the live Allah Instagram. Allah. May Allah bless her yeah. and bless, yeah. bless all the mothers around the world, inshallah. Thank you very much, inshallah, ya Allah. Well, this is the alamat of Dhuhr. Hajji, my mom's on Instagram. SubhanAllah. That's it. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's COVID yeah. period. Exactly, exactly. In any case, we, we were speaking about this and, and obviously, you know, for the audience, and I think everyone in the world knows that there have been some atrocious crimes committed against... Um, the, the guy George Floyd who passed away in the US from the police and so I think it's you know your, your point had you before we before we kind of get into the topic was that it's actually a very interesting point to discuss from an Islamic perspective right yeah. um, because I think that there's not a lot of attention brought to this issue within within Islam um, I, I think obviously people know on a default basis mm -hmm. that Islam is anti-oppression or anti um, uh, Allah or anti anything to do with something negative, but there is also a, a more deeper context potentially to to discuss as well. So, so I guess Hadi, maybe just to start with, if you wouldn't mind, what does, in a nutshell, Islam say about racism? If you're thinking about, for example, different examples we've had in the past, even potentially what the Quran says, how would you kind of give an introduction to it? Ahsan Hadi, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله على ما أنعم وله الشكر على ما ألهم والثناء بما قدم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المحصومين واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين 
Um, as you beautifully mentioned, it's um, it's a topical uh, sort of event today because of what's happened in the U.S. Um, I've uh, traveled to the U.S. the last, um, if I'm not mistaken, since 2014 during the times of Muharram. Mm. Uh, and I've noticed, I, I feel, I mean, obviously I, I've, I've lived in the U.K. for a long time since I was uh, eight years old, but I've noticed it's more of a problem in the U.S., the, 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 this racism problem uh, and we see it more uh, in the news now I feel because as I don't know if, if this quote is, is true or not but I read somewhere that uh, the actor Will Smith saying that uh, racism hasn't got worse it's just that racism is being filmed now mm. um, and you asked me you know what's what's Islam's viewpoint of 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 of, of this uh, and it's clear it's, it's, it's in the quran inna akramakum indallah atqakum which uh, allah speaks to inshallah if we've got time later on i'll speak about the reason of revelation of this verse which mm. is bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim ya ayyuhan nas inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'an litaarafu inna akramakum indallah atqakum surah al-hujurat verse 13 Surah 49, verse 13. And Allah says that we've made you uh, males, females, uh, no other gender. So it's either male or female, as Allah says. Uh, we made you into nations, into tribes, so you get to know each other. Akramakum, uh, the best in the eyes of Allah, the one with the, with the in the eyes of Allah is seen as the one with the most karam. Inna akramakum, and Allah atqakum, the one that has more taqwa. Doesn't mm-hmm. say in Akramakum and Allah al Arabi or in Akramakum and Allah al Abiyad or al Aswad or al Asmar or al Sini or al Hindi. Allah doesn't doesn't see us as 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 people of color. Um, so so Islam is straight that you can say that verse in the Holy Quran as a sort of an intro to tonight's topic, being that uh, uh, the viewpoint of Islam is is that of against racism. Full stop. Fantastic, fantastic. And and so maybe if we can talk about a time where Islam was first given to the people, and of course, mm. you know, we, we read in the Quran, the holy book, the situation that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in when he was brought to a place where, for example, women were devalued or, mm. you know, daughters were buried alive, uh, alive at the mm. time. Um, so I'm, I'm sure there was, you know, some examples of that in the time of the Prophet, but what, what type of, of issues did Never Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam faced when it came to racism or maybe trying to, I guess, yes. stop racism, for example? I said, that's a beautiful question, Hadji. Um, mm-hmm. First, I, I'd like to maybe get, we've got around 43 viewers watching um, or just over 40 viewers watching. So maybe let's just get, I want to ask a question and I'll ask right. you as well, Hadji. Maybe mm-hmm. let's see, let's see, let's see who knows. And throughout history, okay, okay, first let's say that we know that racism is, is prejudice, discrimination, uh, against someone else because of their race mm. uh, that's sort of the definition uh, because you feel that your race is superior to the other person's race that's, that's sort of we can say a summarized definition throughout history i don't know if the viewers can jump in as well who is the first racist let's talk before islam so if, if we if we study the quran if we study history islamic history and all even 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 this could be found in the bible and other books of of of, of other religions, who do you think, and if you know the answer straight away, don't say it. So, who do you think is the first racist that we know? I'm going to wait for the audience. Do you, do, have you I got have an, an answer? Idea. You have an idea. I, I don't know if we'd call it racism necessarily, but I have an idea. Okay, so, so, so some people yeah. are already answering on my screen. Yeah. So, so they, they're, they're saying Iblis and Iblis, Shaitan. Shaitan. That's, that's what I was thinking. I sent, I sent, I mean. At the beginning, you you think you answer you said you know is that is this racism? That's why I, I put racism. I, I said the definition. It's mm. it's thinking that your race mm. is better than the other person's race, so you're going to discriminate against him. And I'm not talking out of yeah. I'm not making this up or just so it can be fun. But if you look at the Holy Quran in Surah Seven, Chapter Seven, Verse Twelve, uh, Allah says in the Holy Quran, "Qala ana khayrun min. I'm better than him." خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين. I'm better than Adam. You created me from fire, and you created him from طين, from soil, dust. 
So when Allah asked the angels to bow down to Adam in a sign of uh, of glorification to Allah, it's not bowing or glorifying Adam. It's a sign of glorification to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Shaitan said no. And Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib, so you asked the question: Is this really racism? Amir al Mu'minin, salamullahi alayhi, in Nahjul Balagha, speaks about this, and he says, "Fa'aduwa Allah." The enemy of Allah, Imam al Mutaasibin wa Salaf al Mustakbirin. The enemy of Allah is the leader of the racist, and the Salaf and the one that has istikbar has this ego. And he points that the first person to have this racism uh, act in him was Iblis. That he thought, I'm I'm better than than Adam. Obviously. It's not a race. We can't really call it racism. The Amir al Mu'minin says mutaassib, someone that's extreme, uh, because obviously he's clay, he's dust. But the fact goes that Iblis thinks that he is superior to Adam alayhi salam, and that's why we can say the first ever person to come up with this. And Amir al Mu'minin calls this. He he calls him the, the enemy of Allah. So those people that say, what's the, what's the viewpoint of Islam on racism? It's straight up. If you're a racist, you're an enemy of Allah. Wow. So the, the police officers that were involved uh, in the killing of, of the person in the US yesterday, George Floyd, are, are, are enemies of Allah. Straight up, according to the Quran and according to the narration of Amir al-Mu'mineen, which is found in Nahj al -Balagha. Coming back to your question, I just wanted to obviously bring this as an introduction yeah, and maybe get, inshallah, the, 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 the viewers more, more, more intrigued with the topic and inshallah they can do more research because this is, this is basic research that I've done. I'm sure if people read into this, they can find more about Islam and racism. But the Prophet wasallam faced this problem, no doubt. I mean, all the Prophets uh, faced a, a problem of class and racism. I shouldn't say just racism, I should put class into it because there's also that... that that, that, that problem of, of thinking you're better someone because of your class, because of how rich you are. Uh, that is also a, a form that, that, you know, this whole white supremacy, I don't want to go into that too much, where most the, the, the rich, the billionaires around the world are, are white, so they feel they're superior to uh, the others. Uh, and you, you'll see more, more colored maybe, or more uh, ethnic backgrounds being at the lower tier when it comes to, when it comes to class maybe. So the whole, all the prophets, including Nuh alayhi salam, Hud, uh, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, faced this problem where people would, 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 would actually come to an extent where Quraysh would come to Rasulullah and say, oh Muhammad, obviously they didn't believe in him as the, as the messenger, and say, Muhammad, we love the words that you're singing or you're reciting. These words of Quran, we love them. We love the poetry. And we really want to come and listen to your poetry and your words from Allah because, you know, the miracle of, of the Quran was the, 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 the words of Allah uh, and the poetic and the, the grammar and the, the, the high literature of the, of the Arabic used in the Quran. So the Arabs, the aristocrats, the higher class Arabs would say to Rasulullah, we want to come and sit next to you and listen to your words from Allah. But we have one problem. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah said, what's your problem? They said, well, you know, you've got Bilal sitting next to you and you've got Khabbab. Yeah. And you've got Hudayfa and Ammar ibn Yasir. And no, number one, they're not Arabs. Number two, some of them are black. Number three, yani, they're from a different class. What you, we're Quraysh. Yani, we're, we're the aristocrats. I don't want to... What kills me, what kills me, by the way, you, you're very shocked at this. What kills me, 1400 years later, we still have this problem, by the way. And inshallah, we'll come back to... That in, in the last question, in the last point. So they, they come to Rasulullah and say, we don't want to, that's the, that's the excuse they used. And the Quran mentions clearly, Rasulullah responds, وَمَا أَنَا طَارَدٌ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ I will not get rid of the mu'mineen just so you can sit, come sit next to me. I'm not getting rid of these faithful, faithful mm -hmm. companions around me. And subhanAllah, uh, when Ja'far al-Tayyar goes to Habasha, in the first migration, uh, and the, 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 the king, the emperor of Abyssinia asks Ja'far, he asks him one question to prove the prophecy of Muhammad. He tells him who surrounds Muhammad, what kind of people are around him. So Ja'far says all types. He tells him, no, no, give me details. Is it the rich, the poor, the colored, the whites, the Arabs? Who surrounds Muhammad? 
and Ja'far al-Tayyar responds, he tells him, it's, it's, it's generally the poor, uh, the colored maybe, and those that are seen in the eyes of people of lower class. Wow. And, and the king of Habasha, the emperor, says Muhammad is a prophet. He tells him why, because, because Isa alayhi salam was also surrounded by these types of people. Because these types of people have nothing to lose or gain, or gain. Nothing to lose and nothing to gain. They're already poor. And they're, not, they're not following Muhammad so they can become rich. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't tell Bilal and Ammar and Khabbab and Hudayfa, join me, I'm going to give you money. Whereas usually, and obviously I don't want to generalize, but the Quraysh, the aristocrats, they, if there was any deal, and they were known to be traders, it was what was the gain for me? What am I gaining? So if I join you, Muhammad, on your mission, what's, what, what is my gain? Mm-hmm. And of course, I just want to point one more thing before we move on, it's, which is yeah. that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam did not face this problem only with uh, the kuffar of Quraysh. No. When he went to Medina, he faced the same problem from the Muslims. Yani, this wasn't something that... When someone says, yani, if you're talking about Islam being this religion that's anti-racist and against racism, there's so many Muslims that are racist. I say, yes, yeah, even the, with Rasulullah, during the time of the Holy Prophet, we haven't seen the Messenger of Allah. People that have seen the Messenger of Allah, that have seen the revelation revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, were also racist. I'll give two examples. The first example is about this verse, which is, Ya ayyuhal nas inna khalaqnaakum dhakaran wa anta. What's the reason behind the revelation of this verse? And I'll summarize the story. <coughs> Rasulullah enters a slave market. And inshallah, we'll come to why there was slavery. Rasulullah enters a slave market. And he sees that slaves are being sold. Right. And then the trader that's selling them brings a black slave, a colored slave, and starts the bidding for the slave. And Rasulullah is watching. As the bidding starts, this black man, I won't call him a slave, this black man, colored man, says, Oh people, I have one condition for whoever buys me as his slave. I have Mm. one term. They say, what is it? And of course, this is in Medina. We're talking here. Everyone is Muslim. So we're not talking about kuffar. He says, what's your shart? He says, my shart is that whenever it's salah time, you allow me to go and pray with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in jama'ah, in congregation. That's my only shart. I have this, this shart, this term. One person steps forward, companion, and says, I agree to this term. And I'll pay this much money so you can become my slave. So the, he buys this, this person and he takes him home. And whenever it's salah, Rasulullah witnesses this. He sees this incident happening. Whenever it's salah time, Rasulullah would turn around after finishing salah, congregation, as he's leading the salah, when he finishes, he sees the black man, the slave, with his uh, companion sitting down. Of course, Rasulullah would look around, see him, smile, and be happy that this person has been coming to his salah. After some time, Rasulullah turned around and this black man wasn't there. So he looked at his companion and he said, where is your fatai? Rasulullah did not call him slave. Wow. He called him, where, hey, where's your youth? Wow. The guy that's with you, where is he? That's why, for example, Rasulullah changed the word slave that was used as abid to fatai or mawla. He, cha- he, he changed the terminology. He said, don't call him slave. Call him my youth, my brethren, as sort of thing. My, my boy. Do you get it? So um, well, he said, where is your friend? So the man said, oh, Rasulullah, he's ill. He's sick. He's not feeling well. So Rasulullah says, when we finish prayer, we're going to go and visit him. They finish salah. They go home. They visit him. They find this so-called colored slave in his last moments on his bed. He's taking his last few breaths. As he, Rasulullah comes, he opens his eyes, he sees Rasulullah in front of him. Imagine that his term was to always pray behind Rasulullah and Rasulullah has come to visit him now. Beautiful. He gets really happy about Rasulullah. So he tells Rasulullah, oh Rasulullah, pray for me. Make dua for me. As Rasulullah raises his hands to make dua, the soul of this person leaves his body. He passes away in the hands of Rasulullah. So Rasulullah 
the, the hadith Hadir, says Hadir, Afu ben Kalamik, I don't know if it's for everyone but I'm struggling with your connection a little bit oh okay uh, is it my voice my video which one is it it's just cutting up like becoming like a robot but I heard oh, okay. I want to hear the story but I heard that he opened his eyes and saw the sort of oh I've moved way forward after that Are you listen can you hear me I don't know if the crowd can I hear can me hear you, hear you, hear you. Hear okay Connection, Connection fine. fine. Or maybe okay, it's alhamdulillah. Okay, carry on. It's just me. So where was I? So yeah, so he passes away as Rasulullah is making dua for him. Mm. Uh, and Rasulullah, the hadith says, ta'athara Rasulullah. Rasulullah is it's touched by this. Yani he, he is really upset. So much so that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says that I will bury this man myself. Wow. Rasulullah prepares his kafan washes his body with his hand, puts him in his cavern, and puts him in his grave. Ajeeb. So far, so good, Sahih. Very nice story. Beautiful. What happens? Some of the Muhajireen and the Ansar, they start speaking. What do they start saying? They say, this Muhammad, this messenger of Allah, he's treating this black slave the same as he's treating us, so much so that he's treating him better than us. Because they, they, it doesn't make sense to them that this so-called, again, I, I'm using the word slave because that's how they saw him. This so-called slave is being washed by the hands of the Prophet, looked after by the Prophet. What's going on? How come this is happening? They got so upset and they started speaking and rumors started spreading that Allah revealed the verse. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum dhakaran wa unta wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ilan Allah revealed this verse because of this incident. But I don't think because of your white, your black. That's that, and that, that proves, and of course, the, the famous story of the Mu'addin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being Bilal. Again, an incident with Bilal is, 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 that, is that some companions would come to Rasulullah and say, and again, this, is, this wasn't because they were worried about the religion. They come to Rasulullah and they say, the pronunciation of Bilal is wrong. He's not saying Ashhadu Allah ilaha. He's saying Ashhadu. He's not pronouncing the Sheen right. They're not doing this because they're worried about the Adhan. They're doing this because they've got haqid, hatred. That how can a black man be doing the Adhan of Rasulullah? Why is it not someone from the Arabs? And Rasulullah responds and says, The scene of Bilal is seen as Sheen in the eyes of Allah. Don't worry about Bilal, Sin or Sheen. In the eyes of Allah, it's Ashadu. Move this hatred out of your heart. And there's so many incidents where, you know, there's so many stories where Rasulullah is sitting with his companions and a com someone walks in and pushes a black man or pushes a non-Arab out of the way so he can sit next to Rasulullah. And Rasulullah always would stop this. And he'd say, listen, and, and, and again, look, when we look at our community centers, sad, I, I say sadly, is... They've become Iraqi only, Iranian only. Some people might disagree with, this is my point of view, by the way. So يعني, it doesn't yeah, have to be right. Where it's Iraqi only, Iranian only, obviously there's, there's, there's reasons for that. But even now it's become difficult to go to another center where if you look at Rasulullah's masjid, and in one incident where the, a racist action takes place between two companions, Rasulullah looks at one of these companions who was from the upper class Arabs, a Muslim though, a, a muhajir, the one that migrated to Medina, and Rasulullah tells him, "Who's look at look at who's around me?" So Rasul, uh, the man looks around and he says, "I see Salman, I see Abadar." He tells him, "No, no, what type of people?" He tells him, "I see black, white, Iranian, Arab. I see all types of people around you." And then Rasulullah tells him, "None of them, uh, you are not better than any of them in the eyes of Allah, except wow. through your taqwa. Mm. Don't think because you've got money." You've got, you're from this, you've got this surname. Yani, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what kills it. So what, you're born into this family. So what? Yani, it's not like you chose to be born. You didn't choose your dad and mom. Yani, you didn't do anything to become part of mm. this. I don't want to mention any family, obviously. From this family. Yani, no one, hey, obviously. No one chose me. I don't think you're... Yani, that's, and, and sadly, again, it's, it's sometimes creeps in to our communities. Ahsant, Ahsant. You, touched on, you touched on a very interesting point earlier mm. when you mentioned Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walked into a slave market mm. and 
I think I, I'm sure that I speak on behalf of the brothers and sisters that a lot of people are probably wondering in the time of uh, Rasulullah, in the time of their Imma as well, there were slaves, and typically the slaves would have been of of coloured fractions or segments that were typically non-Arab in the yeah. Arabian Peninsula. So how, how does that work? What's the relationship between <clears throat> racism, slaves, Islam, that, 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 that type? It's quite complex. It's quite interesting, actually. Um, Islam is, 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 is a theoretical and a practical religion. Mm. Theoretical, as in a verse is revealed about a certain topic, and then it's practiced by Rasulullah, by the family of the Prophet, by the Ahlul Bayt, so they can show that, listen, we're practicing it, so you have to also. So it's not just words. It's words with action. Yeah. Everything. So, for example, when Rasulullah says that all of you are akramakum and Allah at qakum, and he says that, you know, white and black and Arabs and non-Arabs are the same, Rasulullah practiced this by marrying non-Arabs. So he should try to show them that it's not just something words on a, on, on a book or on a board that sometimes certain, today certain companies will have certain regulations and terms like, I'll give you the examples where, where when there's a lockdown uh, measure in, in the UK uh, and then you have someone from the government, what's his name? Saadni, what's his name? Duncan. Duncan Cummings. Hey, Hada, when he breaks the law, people are coming out and saying, why is it one rule for, for the people and, one, and, and a different rule for those that are writing the rules? Rasulullah mm -hmm. led him and the Ahlul Bayt would lead and not just say these are words and rules for the masses to follow. He would lead in this. So slavery is one of those um, controversial topics that a lot of people have misunderstood and said how, or when they think about too much of it, or sadly, Qari Maktab, he's read just a few, so how can Imam Sajjad have so much slaves? How can Imam Ali have slaves? Well, who, he hasn't understood why they have these slaves, or how can Fidla be a slave of Fatima Tizara? What's this, you know, and you talk about Islam being anti-racism and anti-against this. Slavery was, 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 was common in those days as a way of, 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 of how a state would run its economy. Right. Islam can't come and say full stop to slaves and slavery because if all of a sudden it does that what happens is the economy falls people will be out of jobs a lot of these slaves even though we we use the word slaves they considered slavery as their job they didn't see it as slavery how we see it today they saw it as an employment for example in a hundred years time you could get a, a, a group or you could get uh, uh, the world thinking to change where to say 100 years ago they had people that were employed how, how is that possible no one should be yani, it, it changes so Rasulullah knew that and Islam knew that slavery was a way of means for certain people that's how they lived right. Islam came to slowly abolish and stop slavery so how does right. it do that Islam said slavery you can't go and buy any person from, from bring him from another country and he becomes your slave no the only slaves that we have are those that are taken as prisoners of war. Okay. Islam said, instead of taking these prisoners of war and killing them like everyone else does, because again, when we talk about this subject, we can't talk about it sitting down in the 21st century in London, in a Western country. You have to think how, th how were things happening then, 1400 years ago. Hmm. So Islam said, instead of taking these prisoners and killing them and mutilating their body and taking their women as slaves and, and raping them and doing all sorts of things to them, what we're going to instead do is we're going to take them and make them and give them a job. Science slavery, but let's give them a job. So what's the job that we give them? Either they'll start working in our farms or they start teaching the Muslims how to read and write, if they know how to read and write, and we'll free them. Or they pay a ransom and they come out of, the, of, the, of them being in prison. So he gave them three options. So if anything, Islam gave prisoners of war some rights. And today in the United Nations There's certain rights about prisoners of war Islam was the first to do this So slowly, slowly Islam wanted to abolish uh, uh, Slavery and what the Prophet And the Imams would do Whatever money they had They would go and buy the slaves Not so they can have slaves for themselves No They would go and buy them The likes of Maytam al Tamar for example Or Fudda or the wife of uh, Imam al Hussein, uh, The mother of Imam al Sajjad she was a slave girl. Or even the, the mother of our awaited savior. She was a slave girl. What they would do is they would buy them and they'd do either two things. Either the imams would free them straight away. Mm -hmm. 
in certain inc uh, incidents we have in narrations. Or secondly, which is more beautiful, what the Imams would do is they teach them Quran, they teach them uh, Islam, they'd make them Muslims, uh, and then they'd free them. In one narration, Imam al Sajjad, salamullahi alayhi, and uh, this is after the events of Karbala, it is narrated Imam al Sajjad on the nights of Eid, which we just went past, Eid al Fatr especially. Mm. On the night of Eid, he would bring all the slaves that he's bought from the market. They'd, I'm, I call them slaves again for the, for the sake of people understanding. Yeah, yeah. They're not, and he would ask them, he'd say, raise your hands in dua. So they would all raise their hands in dua. And then he would say to them, and I'm paraphrasing, he would say, make dua and say, oh Allah, forgive Zayn al-Abideen as-Sajjad just as he has forgiven us. And they would say, oh Allah, forgive Zayn al-Abideen just as he has forgiven us. As soon as they put their hands down in dua, Imam al-Sajjad would say, you are free now in the way of Allah. Wow. They've spent the whole month of Ramadan with him. They've seen Imam al-Sajjad recite the, the du'as of Abu Hamza and du'a Tawbah. And they spe imagine spending nights with Imam al-Sajjad. Well, I'd stay, I'd stay what would they do? Ahsant, Ahsant Hajji Abu Amir. Zadakallah Sharafan. What they would say is they would say, oh, Imam al-Sajjad, why are you freeing us? We want to stay with you. Why are you, why are you telling us to go? We want to stay and serve you. The likes of Fidda, the likes of Kumail, the likes of Maytham al -Tamar. The likes of John, Mawla, Abi Dhar. John, on the day of Ashura, Imam al tells him, you're free to go. He, he, he says, I don't want to go. How can you tell me to go? I've been with you at times of ease. You want me to leave you at time of difficulty? And John, on the day of Ashura, was 90 years old. Wow. He served Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. He served, he, one of the oldest, served Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. Served Amir al-Mu'mineen. Served Imam al Hassan, wow. served Imam al Hussein, and he died in Karbala on the day of Ashura. Tis'een, 90 years old, John. His relationship was so strong with the Ahl al Bayt that in many narrations, when Imam al Hussein alayhi, used to walk into the tent of Sayyidah Zainab, alayhi salam, John would be by his side. Yani that's how strong and deep the relationship of John was, not just to Imam al Hussein. But to Al Hawra Zainab alayhi salam. She used to call him Al Am John. 90 years old, we're talking about someone. He's 40 years older than Imam Al Hussein. Nearly, or 30, 30 years older than Imam Al Hussein. So, so they did not, and, and, and as I mentioned, the, the Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah alayhim, they did not want to all of a sudden bring down the economy and cause a recession within the state. They slowly tried to abolish slavery. They slowly try to uh, uh, make, give a new method to how you even treat these slaves. Where Amir al muminin salamullah alayhi, when he's walking, I believe it's either with Qambar, if I'm not mistaken, with Qambar or with Maytham, one, one of the other ones. And he's going to the market. He buys Qambar a new shirt to her and he buys himself an old shirt to her. Because the hadith of Rasulullah says that when you have these slaves, there are certain rules you have to follow. You don't call them your slave. You call them fatai. Uh, uh, you make sure that they wear the same standard of clothes as you. They sleep in the same place, the same sort of standards as you. They eat the same food as you. All these, <coughs> all these terms were put by Rasulullah. So the so-called slaves can be treated in, in, in the best manner. And Rasulullah surrounded himself with these types of people, as well as all the Ahlul Bayt, who are the close companions of Imam Ali? Maytham al-Tammar, Qambar, Kumail, Salman al-Farsi. Uh, all these people were the Ammar ibn Yasir that were either non-Arabs, uh, colored people, uh, so-called seen as slaves. But the Amir al-Mu'mineen used to surround himself with these types of people. It wasn't about Amir al-Mu'mineen surrounding himself with Talha or Zubair or Uthman or I don't know who, but just because, just because they're his relatives or because they're Arabs or because they're white. And that's why, by the way, Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullah alayhi, someone says, why did Imam Ali face three civil wars in the space of four years and ten months? Because Amir al-Mu'mineen had justice. Amir al-Mu'mineen did not see, because the caliphs before him, they made up their own rules. The second Same. caliph, for example, he said, those that migrated, the muhajirun, get more money than 
uh, those that did not migrate. He made this up by, or for example, anyone that participated in Badr and Uhud earns more money than anyone else. Arabs earn more money than anyone else. If you if you became a tabi, you did not see the Prophet. He made up new bid'as of how he shares the the treasury, Allah. the Islamic treasury. Allah. Imam Ali sallallahu alaihi said, "No, Habibi, Talha, Zubair, Bilal, all of you are the same." In my eyes, he his own one, children. His own children had. Ahsan, in one instance, he picks up. He he he's sitting down, and someone comes and says to him, "I'm an Arab, and this person is not an Arab. You have to give me more from the treasury." Amir al Mu'minin picks up dust in two hands, and he looks at them, and he says, "What's the difference between this and this?" And the person looks, and he says, "There's no difference." Amir al Mu'minin said, "Both of you are made from dust. Well, there's no difference. It's just because you're Arab or not Arab." Yeah, so yeah. if anyone comes and says that. Oh, and, and that's, that's the beauty of Islam. That 1400 years later, you've got the likes of the United States of America that talks about democracy and justice and, 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 uh, and civil rights and human rights. Till now, they've got problems against, against black people and black people are being discriminated. Or, or, or by the way, we, we bring up this topic not because to say, يعني, because Amir, this is the way of Islam, Imam Hussein in his. Uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam in his will in the month of Ramadan which we, we a few days ago nearly 15 days ago we, we commemorated his martyrdom he says he says become a supporter of someone that is oppressed and stand by him and that's what that's what Islam is about when we stand up to to whether it's black people whether it's Indians being oppressed whatever I mean, it's not it's not about well, just because we're, we're following the trend because all of a sudden all, all uh, what is it? Uh, Black lives matter. So we're following that. Nah, we we stand, or we should. I shouldn't say we. We follow the school that stands up uh, for those that are being oppressed, no matter what color they are. Oppressed now. Ahsan, uh, ahsan. and they're oppressed today, just like uh, the Shias, for example, that are oppressed in Hazara, and Shias that are oppressed in other parts of the world that that we should stand up for. We all we we we've been taught from the university of Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib to stand up for the oppressed. Ahsan, Ahsan. <clears throat> so how, how, does it, how does it translate to today for our audience, for me, for you? How do we what, what do we need to do to stand up? Yani you gave a beautiful example there that Amir Mu'minin, Imam Hussein, Abu Abdullah, alayhi salam, their, their, their university, their schools of thought are stand up for the oppressed. As an example, there are black people now being oppressed, right? And there are people who are non-black, there are Shias being oppressed in, in Myanmar or China or Hazar, as you said. Mm. What, what do we do to, to you know, what, what is our role now to stand up to racism today? I mean, there's three levels to standing up. I, I'll, I'll broaden your question if you don't mind, Haji. It's a beautiful question, but I'll broaden. There's, there's three, uh, uh, three levels, you can say, of, of standing up uh, against oppression. Excuse me. The first level is through your heart, mm. which is the simple level. And this is according to a hadith from the imams that uh, I believe uh, from Imam Amir al muminin as well as Imam al-Baqir, salamullah ala, and, and Imam al kadim So a few imams have narrated this hadith. The first sort of uh, step or level, you can say, is, is to have this inkar in your heart. Mm. As in, for example, today, uh, I wasn't there on the day of Ashura. Right? I wasn't with Imam al Hussein. No. But what do I say to Inni Silmun Liman Salamakum? Waharbun Liban Harabakum. Not just what, in my heart that I say that I'm against Umar ibn Sa'ad Yazid. And that's why, by the way, a lot of people say, why today you have to bring out these names and you have to do, uh, ask Allah to take his mercy away from so and so? Why do you have to do this? Hi, Imam Hussein is right. Fulan is wrong. God will judge them. God will judge them. God will judge them. What's it got to do with you? If I, if, I don't, if I don't pick a side, then I can't distinguish right and wrong in my daily life. But I can't. In my, at work, I don't know what's right or what's wrong. I'll stand up with the oppressed. It's not just about an event that occurred 1400 years ago. It plays in my life today if I can't distinguish what haq is and what batal is, what truth is what and what falsehood is. So the first level is through your heart. Right. Which I think it is, 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 is the simplest level and a must, according to some, according to, 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 to our Furu' al Deen, it's an obligation. Mubas is a must. It's an obligation, wajib. Wow. Through your heart. I, if someone says, I can't speak, I can't, I can't go out, do prostra- uh, 
uh, go to protest I mean, through my heart. At home, I sit down through my heart. I don't believe in this. Allah, there's a hadith that says, if you believe in, in a group of people through your heart, Allah will place you with them on the day of judgment. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's the first level. The second level is through your tongue. Mm. Through your tongue, not just speaking. Alhamdulillah, today we have the use of social media, which, which especially now in, during lockdown has become so big and so massive that everyone's using it. Whether it's writing a tweet, whether it's writing an article, whether it's writing something on Instagram, whatever it is, use your, your social media platforms, use your tongue, use whatever facility that you have, especially for the youth, to speak out against this, to say that, listen, Islam is a religion that's against racism. Indirectly, you don't have to or pick a, a verse in the Quran or a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Or, there's so many of these stories that, that we can have. So through your tongue, this is the second level. The third and most difficult level is through your hand. Right. Now through your hand, you have to obviously judge the situation. Oh, Allah, tomorrow, all of a sudden now, because I feel black people are oppressed or Shias are oppressed, I'll, I'll get, every white person I see, I'll punch in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> Just in case people think we're advocating for violence. But when, when it calls for it, when it calls for it, you're there to defend. Right. I emphasize on, on the word of defend, right. in defense, not in attack, that you're right. there. If, 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 a, if a person next to you is being oppressed, obviously, if, if you're put in that situation, you defend through your action. And I feel that there's, there's, there's a fourth level, which is according to the, uh, I'm summarizing the hadiths of all the imams, right. and according to my very basic research, is through your own actions. There's no point, there's no point, I mean this, is, is to say, I'm against racism, I'm against this, but you're racist in your Husseiniya. Mm -hmm. you, I was going to say, that's, that's a bit of an issue now, and you touched upon it last time in yeah. our communities. It's, mm. a bit, it's a bit of a challenge. It's a challenge because, because, you know, we love these stories about Bilal. Bilal, Mu'addin Rasulullah, or John, Mawla Abi Dhar. We, we mentioned the stories of John, how he, uh, Imam al Hussein salam Allahi alayhi, respected him. And sadly, I say this again, this is very controversial. Even sometimes, when we look at the story of John, we look at it in a racist way. Some people might think, I don't want to go into the details, but, but sometimes even the masaib of John, the way we re recite it, we recite it in a racist way. I don't want to go, uh, so I'll stop there. But even then, we, we, we do it in a, in a racist way. Where, and I only realized this when, when I was with a colored person, a black person, Shia, who said, you know what? The way you're, you're, you're narrating the story is kind of racist. And he explained the point of view. And I thought, okay, it is. Because the way you, 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 make, out, you make it out, like, sadly, again, this is not, a, I don't want to generalize, but some instances where you make it out, like, John, because he was black, he smelt funny or he did not you know all the all these all these yeah, yeah, yeah. hadith that okay, obviously i don't want to go into the details of the reliability of them of all, all this stuff. but sometimes even when we're trying to promote anti-racism we, we go about it the wrong way mm. uh, and again this is this is this is basic according to my my basic research but i think we need to be more we we need to be more welcoming of our brothers and sisters around the world uh, not according to their color or what language they speak, or you know, there's no, there's no harm. I don't want to again cross the line. I'm, I'm from Iraq. I'm from Najaf. I'm proud to be Iraqi. I'm proud to be born in Najaf. I'm proud to be from a family that's from Najaf. But that does not mean that, and, and no one can take that away from me. But that does not mean that because I'm from Najaf, I feel I'm better than someone from Basra or from. Mumbai or from Baghdad. Baghdad or any other city or you know Jeddah or I can't I can't think that I'm better I'm, I can be proud of my heritage you can be That's proud of being from at -Taif. you can be proud from being from Karbala Ahsan Sayyid Hassan you can be proud from whatever city you're from Al-Rasi but don't think you're superior that's when you sort of cross the line when you think you're better because of where you're from because as I said I didn't choose to be come from Najaf I didn't choose to be born there. I didn't, and also, it, it means nothing in God's what, do, what does it mean? So what? I mean, even in this world, so what? So I think we need to be more accepting. Why? Because I feel that the soldiers, the 313 companions, leaders of Imam Al-Mahdi, Ta'ala, Farajah al-Sharif, 
will not be all Iraqis. Will not be all Iranians. Will not be all Pakistani. Will well, not I be all the Kurds. Imam, the, the, the Imam is not. The it's imam, half. The imam is not I said the Imam is, is not is not is, is not fully Arab. He's half. So, I think we 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 need to. And, and as a step, if someone was to say, How, what can I do as a practical step? Because the fourth step I said is action, is to start being uh, accepting of going to other centers. Mm. No, I, I won't say accepting other people coming to your centers because alhamdulillah, we, 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 I feel we, we are. Now we're in lockdown, it might be more difficult, but maybe when it opens up, the fact that now we've, 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 we've seen all different types of people from different backgrounds on, our, on, on these platforms and sharing, sharing lectures with right. other, other speakers, Maybe it's time where we, we, we arrange and organize events from with our Khoja brothers, with our Pakistani brothers, with our black brothers, with our... It, should, it shouldn't be, uh, Wallah, Husseiniyah for Iraqis. And why, all this Husseiniyah, not only does it become for Iraqis, it becomes from a particular city of Iraq. Yeah. And again, it, it stems down to, I feel, our children and who we marry and who we accept. You know, it's... it's, it's um, it builds where, 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 you know, the imams married again. I know some, everyone knows this, but every, again, everyone knows it and they, they're proud of it, but they won't follow it themselves. They won't do it. I said, you know, well, how, you know, if would they accept if, if someone from and Africa that's, that's was the to propose? Point, Hadi. That's probably what that level you're talking about. And, that is the action point. And I feel we are, we are, we are going towards that because of the globalization of the world anyway. Mm -hmm. So alhamdulillah, we're, we're, we're moving towards that. But again, the three steps that the Ahlul Bayt speak about is the tongue, uh, the, the, heart, the, the, the heart, the tongue, and, and, and the hands, obviously, are the three steps, three levels. Ahsent, Ahsent, Hajjina. We want to take this moment as well to let all of our audience know, to let your friends and family know that there's no bias from al Harakat Husseiniyah. Imam Hussein ship is for everyone. So it doesn't matter where you're from, if you're green or black or white or yellow, of or course. Arab or not Arab. Of you're, course, you're, you're, as you're, long you're as, as long as you have the love of Al Hussein, Al Shaheed, Sayyid Al Shuhada, as long as you have the love of Hussein, and you know what, you don't even have to be Muslim or Shia. I'll put it even out there. As long as you have the love of Hussein in your heart, and you wish that in your heart, in your heart, that on the day of Ashura, if you were present, you'd be on Imam Hussein's side, and you're against those that oppressed Imam Al Hussein, then of course we respect you and honor you, because that's yeah. what it's about. It's about truth. And falsehood, and I mentioned this. I think when we done the talk about Imam uh, Mahdi Ajallah Taala Farajah Sharif, that that when the Imam calls for the tarat of Imam Al Hussein, that he says, mm -hmm. "I've come to avenge Imam Al Hussein." Salam Allah Alaihi. He's avenging the truth. He's standing up for the truth. So, so you can be a Christian, a Jew, you can be someone that has no faith, but you believe in the in the concepts of Imam Al Hussein, and because you believe in the concepts of Imam Al Hussein of truth, loyalty, bravery. All these characteristics of Imam al-Hussein, then you'll follow. You'll fall in love with Imam al-Hussein, and if you fall in love with Imam al-Hussein, you will say, "This Imam al-Hussein, what did he follow?" And you notice that Imam al-Hussein followed Allah. So you, you, a sort of, a, sort of a natural way for you to become a Muslim, and that's why the school of Imam al-Hussein, we know and we've heard about this: Christians, Jews, Sunnis, they've come to Imam al-Hussein and asked for their hajat, and Imam al-Hussein didn't turn anyone away. I always mention this that the 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 we ala hubbihi miskin and wa yatim and wa asira. A lot of scholars say the miskin and the yatim most probably were Muslims. Or Muslim, Ahsan. but the asir. A lot of people say if he's an asir, he's an act uh, captive. That means he's a captive of what? Captive of war. That means you fought the Muslims that he wasn't a Muslim. When he knocked on the door, Imam Ali didn't come out and say, "Wallah, it's a Muslim." Subhanallah, there's wisdom in that being the last person as well. Subhanallah. Yeah, that, 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 who, he, he didn't ask. Probably the hardest one. The hardest one to give away food. Imam, Imam Amir al Mu'mineen and Fatima al Zahra al Hassan al Hussein didn't say, Wallah, Baba, Hada, he's not Muslim, don't give him food. Doesn't matter. And that's, I think, a lesson for us to take. But we can never reach that level. Ahsan, Ahsan, Hajina, he's absolutely Thank you so much. Very astute points. The time is about to, to, to end, so we're going to thank you very much. Looking forward um, to the quiz. Beautiful topic. I'm going to upload it now as well to IGTV. So if anyone wants to rewatch, or I, I would actually recommend for anyone on the chat who has any friends who are non Shia, who want to know about Islam's stance on racism, who have maybe inferred or made the point that maybe Islam is a, a or maybe has some racist tendencies or has in the past. Then send them this live, inshallah. Ashtirak Hajina. And just before, so just before we go, I, I know, I know, my mom's watching, and, and so so I don't, I don't get this wrong. 
uh, I'm actually my mother's actually from Karbala and I, my dad's from Najaf so I'm 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 the best of both worlds Allah. so people know this is Yeah and you're mixed race you're basically mixed race Allah the best of the two worlds Najaf my and Karbala my, my one's even more more uh, mixed controversial Shlon my my mom's from Kadmia hey, and my, my dad's from Adamia that's a proper mixed one that's a mixed race yeah. Allah yahfudhum Allah yakhli hadina Thank you, Thank you so much. This is a good job. Thank you so much.